Hello and welcome to another episode of Metal Effort. My name's Nehemiah and today we're going to be looking at this piece of metal, the Wii Knives 910. That's the model number and then the name of the knife is 037. This is a collaboration with Kellen Bogadress? Bogad... Bibbidi... Bobbidi... Dude, sorry guy, I don't know how to say your last name, but you made a really cool knife. So, let's do our size comparison. We've got our classic PM2 and immediately you realize this knife is dwarfing the PM2. <laughs> so this is not a small knife by any stretch of the imagination. Uh, I do have a couple specific things I want to compare it to. The infamous CKF Suhoi. This is basically the exact same blade length, uh, just a hair over four inches, which is crazy. Definitely not a small knife. So I think the biggest thing I want to get out of the way as soon as possible, PSA, don't don't think this is a small knife. It's a very big knife. It's hard to tell by the shape of it, the geometry of the knife, uh, without you know checking checking the actual numbers and getting some comparisons in. I don't have a Shirogorov uh, 111, which would be the the best comparison to it. This is just a, a Hardy R which is in the 3.75 inch range. Uh, again, this is dwarfing even that knife. So let's get a quick weigh in. Clocking in at pretty much four ounces, a shade over that. Four ounces for a four inch blade is amazing. You know, there's that golden ratio of ounce to inches, but as you go up, it, it becomes harder and harder and harder to maintain that one to one ratio because it's the volume of the knife is getting bigger, not just the length, uh, and, and it scales super linearly. And so there's some really amazing things that's going on in this knife, which I'll show you, and how they're achieving that really, really lightweight uh, weigh-in figure that we just got. Okay, with the objective stuff out of the way, let's get into the subjective, starting with the dent, the decent, the excellent, the nitpicks, and the terrible of this piece of metal. First off in the decent is that weight. And I took a few photos when I took it apart to uh, lube it up and see the inside. So I'll show you those pictures now. Heavy, heavy milling. Uh, it's not just one hollowed out thing. Like they actually have layers and, and tiers of the milling so that it's like digging as deep as possible into the scale on the inside to achieve that incredible uh, blade to weight ratio. Uh, so a plus on the weight reduction. I, I haven't seen this big of a knife weigh this little, especially considering that we're not using any carbon fiber. This is titanium on both sides. This is, this is very difficult to do well. <laughs> and, and, you know, it, it'd be really easy to slap this knife together and make it five ounces and just be like, it's a big knife. Five ounces is pretty good for, for you know, that, that size. So power to them to take it one step further and get it down to four ounces. That, that's awesome. One of the things I like about the weight reduction is it gives the knife really good balance because you have a very long blade. And, you know, I think if you didn't mill it out, it would be really back heavy, especially since it kind of fills the hand and the back part of the knife. It doesn't taper down quite like the other knives that I've been showing you, like, say, the Suhoi, it tapers down pretty quickly. And so I think that was a big way for them to be able to keep the weight down on this knife, which still weighs more than this, by the way. But previously, before the 037 came out, this was the champion to big knives uh, weight ratio. And even though this looks like it would be heavier just from the profile of it, it turns out it's, it's much lighter. And so that... It's really amazing, and uh, I think it provides really excellent balance. Next thing I really want to highlight here is the clip. Now, this clip itself, it's, it's hidden hardware, which is cool. And then it's kind of contoured into like a little divot here. So this is really interesting. It does two things. One, when you put it into your, your pant pocket or short pocket or whatever, the clip isn't super tight here, like on its own, but because there's these ridges coming up, it kind of pins the fabric to the knife. And so it, 
I, th I was a little worried that it might be too hard to get in and out of the pocket, but it's actually not that bad at all. There's plenty of clearance and there's enough, you know, lift on the clip that that's not an issue. But even though it's a very small clip, it managed to, you know, stay in the pocket, even with like thinner shorts uh, that, you know, maybe you might be worried about the slipping out, especially with such a big knife and such a short clip, you know, that, that could be a concern. But here, you know, it, it just kind of, you know, the ridge and then the clip are kind of pinning the fabric down, uh, which gives it a little bit extra torque on that. Uh, second thing that I like about it is that it kind of curves the clip out of the way so normally the clip is going to be the biggest thing to be worried about in terms of hot spots. And I think if this was a completely flat scale, that might just be the case. But this contouring on the handle that's kind of guiding you up and over the clip, this is the least felt clip of any knife I've ever used. It just it folds right in. It feels like there isn't a clip on it. That's incredible to me. One, it's not going in very deep, but even where it is, this feels almost like one solid piece in the hand. So transitioning that into the ergonomics, man, did they pay attention to details on this. You see crazy amounts of chamfering, contouring of the scales, but it's very deep, heavy, you know, cutouts here. And I'm going to zoom in for this part because I, I really want to show off how amazing and just brilliant this is. So they've got, you know, this lock bar and they've got some heavy chamfers on the inside of both this side and on the scale to give you easy horizontal and vertical access to the lock bar. Awesome. That's great. But then even more on the outside of the lock bar is this deep, heavy chamfer just like it is on this side. And so it, again, makes it feel when you put your hand here that it's it's kind of one solid, almost like a fixed blade. It reminds me of like a Bark River or something in terms of just how it feels like one solid piece that was formed and custom fit for your finger to go there. Incredible detail, incredible, you know, intention on ergonomics, and it really pays off on the knife on the whole, it's it's incredibly comfortable to hold this knife. Um, I think it's better it's better than the Suhoi, just because it's so well fitted. This is very good. I'm not saying anything negative about this. As far as the ergos are fantastic, it's very good. But this, I think, is probably the second most comfortable knife I've ever held. First, it's still being the Koenig Arius. Um, I like, I like the palm swell here in the Koenig a little bit better, but this is amazing. This is just so good. All the normal hot spots and sharp points that you would have in kind of the no fly zone where you got the lock bar and sharp points, everything is chamfered perfectly. And then the clip is the second biggest problem with hot spots. And they very carefully paid attention to both those things and designed a solution to overcome those ergonomic snafus. So awesome work there on the design and the execution of this. Very, very good. Obviously, you have the primary grip. Your thumb lands exactly where they designed it to. Uh, jimping is excellent, sharp, but not too sharp. Definitely not ornamental here. This is very, very useful. Uh, draw cuts you can do. I, I don't know if that's necessarily what it's meant for, but it definitely feels like it is. Uh, your thumb doesn't really want to go up too much unless you're going into the choke up grip and then you get to use that same exact spot for the thumb, which feels natural. So if you really want to get in the detailed, you know, cutting position, you can. Uh, and when you're back in the, you know, hammer grip, or I guess it's a sword grip, not hammer grip, uh, sword grip, uh, you don't feel too far away from the blade sometimes. You know, just by the ge geometry of the, the knife, it feels a little bit awkward to be back here. But there are definitely times where it feels natural to be here or here. Uh, so the er ergonomics on this knife, I could have put it in the decent, but I've got a lot of stuff in the decent, so I'm spreading things out. But ergonomics would, on any other day, probably be in there. The excellent, 
But again, we're subjective uh, in the size of our hands and just how it fits, so we'll keep it here. There's some small details I want to point out here, such as the pi the pivot is non-free spinning, which I always appreciate. There's a shelf in there keeping it from spinning around. They got it pretty well centered this time. I know that on the uh, Bishop, it was a little off-center, uh, but they did a good job on this one. The lanyard hole is really interesting. Uh, it's not really a hole, but the lanyard option or solution here, it's just a little post here. It's almost like a location pin, uh, locator pin. And you just, you know, wrap it around the end of the knife. It's incorporated. You can't see it from either side. It's just in the back end here. And the cool thing about this is you can just take it out. I, I don't know how much I'm, you know, compromising the structure of the knife. I could see it holding up, you know, the the scales here a little bit, but as we get into it a little bit later in the backspacer screw area, I don't think it'll affect it too much negatively for you to just take it out if you didn't want it. I'm probably gonna leave it in there because I did such a good job of hiding it. I, I'm not offended by it being there in the slightest and I'll probably lose it if I take it out. So I'm gonna keep it in, but it's nice that there's the option to take it out and then it's so well designed and, and placed in the first place. It's not affecting how deep the blade goes into the back of the knife. It's <laughs> probably the best uh, blade to scale ratio in terms of just uh, size of the blade in the handle. Uh, it's not all upside though. We'll talk about that in a second. Last thing we'll talk about in the decent is just the general fit and finish. And it's pretty much immaculate in terms of it's perfectly centered. Uh, again, we've already gone over all the chamfering is spot on. One of the best suite of chamfers I've seen ever before. Um, the only thing I can really find that keeps it maybe out of the excellence is, and it's hard to tell. I haven't sharpened this knife myself yet to confirm it, but there's a grind line right there there that's not exactly even but I mean this is the nittiest pick of nitpicks I'm not even gonna put it in the nitpicks uh, but that's the one thing keeping it out of the excellent otherwise you know and it you're probably not gonna have that on yours if you get it uh, and I'm pretty sure I can just sharpen that out so it's not a big deal but everything else is pretty much immaculate there's not a single hangnail on this knife that would bother you um, so yeah, it's very, very well executed by we, as, as always. All right, let's get into excellent. I've got four excellent things to talk about. First is the action, which has three subcategories. We're doing our OCD, the open, close, and disengage. Uh, in the wrong order, let's talk about open. So flipper tab is your one and only way to really get the knife out. Uh, very big shelf here. It's, it comes out pretty high. It's very much rounded on the end, so I don't think it's, you know, it's not too sharp as far as pocket pecking goes, but it's definitely hanging out there. Um, the whole knife, when it's in your pocket, is just situated such that I don't think, you know, you getting in and out of your pocket is a problem. I didn't have that problem in carrying the knife at all. I really don't care too much about the whole pocket pecker issue unless it's really egregious. Uh, I'd rather have good action, and I, I prefer... It to be a little bit bigger that was my biggest nitpick on the suhoi which is the knife i keep comparing this to is that the the, the flipper tab was a little too modest um and the jipping wasn't quite sharp enough it was at kind of a slope that that's like uh and so this this fixed that problem perfectly so you're always able to get 100 percent deployment on you know flicking it out as far as the acoustics i really like it it's a good, solid engage. I'm doing it up to the <laughs> mic there, if you couldn't tell. Um, detent is good. It's As far as, like, you know, if it 50-50 detent is, you know, it's just strong enough to where it's going to fly out every time, uh, but not too strong to where, you know, it makes your action on the close awkward or, uh, you know, difficult to open the knife. This is, you know, right in the middle zone. I, I personally... I would like it a little bit harder of a detent, but I mean, the, again, this is not something I can like shake out or anything like that in the slightest, but I can make it fail if I, you know, slow roll it 
it, it's not like it's impossible to fail where if you have a tighter detent, detent sometimes you can get closer to like almost a zero chance of failing uh, just because that bent up that pent up uh, pressure just releases and it always comes out. Not to say you have to be quick or intentional. Like I can go a little bit slower and it's still going to go, but it is possible to make it fail if you want. So on the disengage, uh, we're pretty good. I kind of alluded to this already that it's so easy to get in there with your thumb that there's zero lock stick. There is not a detent ball ramp, but this is definitely a case where you don't need it just by virtue of how, where the detent ball is that by the time the blade is disengaged, you have so much leverage to push it up onto the tang of the blade that it doesn't feel like too harsh of a jump onto the tang. I think it would be extra, extra smooth if you did that. But again, that, that initial disengage push is already on the tang of the blade. It's not going to bounce back into it, really. Like, I can't even get it to bounce back. If, I, if it's not completely engaged and I put it right where the, it's bunking into that, it's, it's really soon... It's like right here is where that kind of bounce happens. And it's just, you have so much torque that you can slowly get that under the tang of the blade without making it awkward. And it's perfectly fine. I, I like detent ball ramps, but I'm not like a snob that thinks if it's not there, it's totally bad. In this case, it's not. Sometimes you need one to make the action reasonable. This is not one of those times. Uh, as far as the close goes, once you have the detent ball and the tang of the blade, one good jostle, <laughs> and not even a good jostle, just a normal jostle, I guess. Otherwise, you're getting to pop back out of that detent. Just a normal close. I would I would compare this action to the Deacon. The Deacon is one of my favorite uh, fidgeting knives, and I think this is pretty much the exact same experience. As far as the open, the close and the disengage, it's it's exactly the same as the Deacon, which is to say, very, very good. I, I will point out, obviously, you know, you take a sheer gore off or something, it's a little bit snappier on the open, detent's a little bit stronger. The disengage is probably worse on the hottie, uh, just because there's that, you know, infamous Shiro lock. It's not, I, I don't think I have a bad case of that on this particular knife, but it's a, it feels a little bit clumsy compared to you know what's going on here it's it's just on the tang of the blade a little bit quicker and a little bit smoother but the fall shuddiness of the shiro is definitely the best of the best um so you know this is a this is a 900 dollar knife this is a 280 dollar knife and this is you know 98 percent of the way to this action so small small mi minor thing overall the three together definitely earns its spot in the excellent position here Next thing we're going to talk about is the blade shape and the blade overall. Now, we has done an excellent job of keeping the blade clean. So this side, there's nothing. This side, there's nothing except for a minor little collaboration mark here. Um, that's very tastefully placed. It kind of looks the, like the IKBS symbol. So I was like confused for a split second when I first saw this, but it's the maker's mark. And then really clever placement of the steel type, because I do still like that on a knife. And let's see if I can bring that into focus. It's right there, which is kind of an interesting place to put it. Um, I kind of like that. You know, it's hidden right there now when, it, when it's open. Um, very, very nice. But here, here's kind of how it earns its spot into the excellent. And this is not even counting the cutting power, which I'll talk about, is this like polished bead blast finish. And this is the thing that I think really is probably the best premium finish that's going on right now. So you have all these knives that kind of have the same thing going on where it's kind of matte, but not not like no shimmer at all. Uh, I think both the the 037 and the Suhoi have this very similar, very excellent finish where it, it dances with the light, it plays with the light, but it can hide scratches really well. It looks really even and clean and, and intentional. Uh, the the Shiragorafs are close to that. They're a little bit rougher, 
uh, not quite as polished as the other two, but this si very similar kind of feel and look and and design in in the actual finish of the blade. I think this is probably the best way to go. I think m this is my overall favorite blade finish right here that you're looking at. And and again, you know, this is a four hundred and fifty five dollar knife. This is two hundred and seventy dollars. It takes a lot of work and effort to get this finish. You know, it's a lot of you know you beat blast it and then you're like polishing it. You know, I think they do it by hand still on the the polishing. Obviously, um, you pretty much have to do that by hand. But really, really, really good job. Attention to detail, the execution of it, and just the overall end product is amazing. Now, here's the thing I haven't talked about on this knife. This knife is incredibly thin uh, blade stock. So for such a big knife. You know, I was really impressed with the Suhoi. So we're at 0.14, we'll say, which I'm going to compare this to the Suhoi real quick, which is about the same as the Suhoi. So that I think that converts to 3.5 millimeters, which I think is perfect. Now, on on you know I was comparing this to the Deacon. The Deacon was a, a 2.5 inch blade, but that was a four millimeter stock, and so you got a much larger knife with a much thinner stock, and boy does this sucker slice! It is awesome. I took a Chipotle burrito, and I could cut through the entire thing. It didn't feel like a I was wedging it apart. It felt like I had a little miniature lightsaber and it was just like a clean cut. It was like perfectly cut. Like rice kernels were cut in half. Like every, it, it was like completely cauterized off. It was awesome. So I, I've done a lot of food prep with this knife. Just, I think that's really what reveals how thinly ground a, a knife is and just the benefit of it. And the sucker is a beast in the kitchen. Um, Obviously, you have this like drop point kind of stabby thing here going on. The, the tip is incredibly thin, for better or for worse. You know, if you're looking for like a hard use knife, I wouldn't necessarily recommend this for that kind of thing. Um, you know, just looking at like the PM2, it's much, much thicker on the PM2, even down to like, you know, 25% pat, uh, percent to the end it's still thicker on the PM2. So this is not necessarily hard use. It, it's kind of in a weird spot because it's such a long knife, but such a thinly ground, you know, designed to cut knife that it, it's actually kind of filling a unique spot in that regard. So I like it because I'm, I'm like a, I don't know, pansy beta male or whatever. I'm not, I'm not cutting chains off of boats or something. I, this is, you know, perfect for EDC in terms of the kinds of cuts I would do. Not necessarily perfect in EDC in terms of the length, but, but still it's designed exactly to cut and it does. Speaking of design, I want to talk about what's going on back here. Now, at first glance, this just looks like a normal knife when I show you both sides. But the closer you look and you realize the detail that went into this and the innovation that went into this, I think you should be surprised and delighted. The way this works, when you unscrew these two screws, there's kind of three sides, two sides, I guess, from each side, um, that kind of sandwiched together. So if these are the scales, you have these like little stacks that stack up on top of each other. And then when they're in line in position, you screw into the hole that is formed by the two scales coming together. Now, why, why does this matter? Why should we care? Well, this is giving you basically the effect of a locator pin where everything is like perfectly lined up because you have to, you know, get everything sandwiched together so tightly that the scales are gonna be aligned this way properly and this way properly. And it's like impossible to misalign them because there's so many layers that are going on to, on top of each other to kind of lock it into place. So it's like locator pins, but instead locator plates that help you both laterally and longitudinally 
tootly. I don't know. <laughs> and so it's all done. It's all done. It's extremely minimalistic, uh, very lightweight, and very well balanced. You know, we've seen those things. We've talked about those things already. This is what's facilitating that. Now, next thing to save even more space, they're being really efficient with the top of the knife here. This is similar to the Pleroma that I reviewed, where it's basically exposed access to the internal, which is not internal anymore, uh, stop pins. So as the knife opens, you can actually see those stop pins move and then lock into place. And so, you know, we don't need to bury that deep into the knife and add a bunch of titanium here to like cage those in it you know it's exposed sure but that means you can spray it out with air you know probably get a q-tip if something got in there it's not that big of a deal it's easy access you can get to it you can even see the bearings in there so if you wanted to oil it without taking the knife apart or rinse it out and then oil it you can do that you have easy access right here so it you know it's a double-edged sword this is easier for stuff to get in there but it's also easier to to clean it out. So I, I feel like that cancels itself out. The benefit though, is we don't need all the extra material to build the knife out further to keep that stuff internal. So that's another way to save on weight. And so it, it it's again, you know, good design is how can we make sure the knife functions exactly like we want it to, and then remove, take away things as much as we can take away and still achieve the goal of what the knife is designed to do. That's good design. And this is very much good design. I, Whoever you are, who I can't pronounce your, knife, your name, I apologize. You are a fantastic designer. I want to give you major props. This is really, really clever. And I don't think a lot of people are going to immediately understand how brilliant this knife is. Uh, until they get their hands on it or watch my review. All right, final excellent thing. We've indulged in the excellent section of this for a while. This sucker is $280. Man, I mean, this is, you know, I'm already singing praises of the Suhoi being half the cost of a Shirogorov and just as good, if not better, than pretty much anything they offer. And then this is saying, okay, well, I'm going to be 97% of what you are in terms of you know, overall design and functionality, but I'm going to be half the cost of you. <laughs> that, not quite, but that's amazing. Uh, you know, this is 60% the cost of, of what the Suhoi is, which is already a good value. And so this is, you know, if I had something beyond excellent, you know, terrific, superb, you know, amazing, this belongs in that section, I think, for the value. What you're getting out of this, just, you know, we, we haven't even talked about the, the stone wash anodization on the blade. Looks awesome. Plays with the light. Like, all that detail. You got the milling on this. It, it, it's, oh, man. The attention to detail, the design, and the execution of this knife is amazing. Amazing. For $280, I think this is one of the single greatest values of any knife I've personally handled. Uh, so yeah, deserves its spot in the excellent. All right, so let's talk about the nitpicks. I've got four things to talk about. The blade to body ratio, normally I'm always giving a knife really good props if it can manage to, you know, be really efficient with the blade coming to the end of the knife. So, you know, another good example is again, the Suhoi. A bad example would be something like the Para 3. So you can see the end of the blade. This is like comically way more room that you could have put the blade in. This one is perfect. It's very close to the end, but there's no way I'm cutting myself. You know, no matter how hard I try, I cannot cut myself on that blade. Uh, I can cut myself on this blade. In fact, I have cut myself on this blade right there. It's starting to heal up. But, you know, I took one for the team, guys. I was like, can I cut myself there? You know, how, how hard is it? Whoop! And I cut myself. So you got to be careful. I think, you know, I was trying to cut myself, essentially, and you can do it. So you, you got to be careful on that. I think it's kind of a mistake to have it that exposed. I mean, I can, like, still see the tip of it right there. 
you know, normally you shouldn't be able to see that. Like, it's just so close to the end. If you've got fleshy fingers at all and you happen to move it in the wrong way, you can nip yourself. Um, yeah, I mean, some could say that deserves to be in the, in the terrible. I think, you know, if you're familiar with it, you know, reaching in this way, I couldn't really do it. I had to go this way. And so if I'm reaching in to grab the knife, you know, I'm not really in danger of cutting myself too bad. I, but I could foresee a way that you do it accidentally, uh, especially depending if you've got more meaty fingers than I, I've got. That's definitely a possibility. So watch out for that. Could nip you. And this, this isn't, I don't think this is a practical thing uh, problem necessarily, but just kind of an aesthetic one. I wish the clip was just a smidge longer, even without moving this whole, you know, milled out area. I think it could have gone a little bit more. Uh, it's just, it's kind of comically short. I think that it, I don't know, it, it's fine. It works again, because this is pinning down your fabric. It's not going to fall out like you think it might. It's more of like, it just looks goofy. So that's a minor thing. Uh, I'm trying to find things to speak negatively of this knife. Uh, that's one of them. Next thing is on the finger choil, you know, my finger barely fits. You know, I've got medium sized hands and it's just barely there. You know, if I move forward, I could, could cut myself here if I moved out forward in kind of a dumb way, wasn't paying attention or something. Uh, this cut was not from that. Um, so I think, again, if you have any bigger hands than I do, this choil might be a problem for you. Last thing, and this is <laughs> all kind of related to just hand size. So it's a big knife, but when I'm holding it normal, I've got a little bit of room before I get to this point. Um, but, you know, if you've got monster hands, I could see this being kind of an issue for you because it, it, it's curving up. It's very similar to the Deacon in that way, where the Deacon had that like a little hook right here. And so people did have bigger hands and it didn't fit on that hook, but that hook happened to be made out of like the carbon fiber scales on the Deacon. Uh, this is not the case on the titanium. I mean, that would be a lot more doing to, to shave that down and they're all anodized. So that's going to be an issue. Look a little weird, but I think for most people, it's not going to be too much of a problem because you, you do have a little bit of room before you get there but something to be mindful of for the really extra, extra large hands out there. All right, let's move on to the terrible. I do have a potential terrible thing, and that is just the size. This is kind of like not so much terrible in, as in objectively terrible. Maybe you're looking for a big knife, so obviously this isn't bad, but I think if somebody's gonna be like, nah, I'm not getting this knife, it's gonna be because it's so huge, you know? Being four inches, a little over actually, the, you know, le legality stuff kind of starts to, to play a, a, a part in it. And so it's kind of frustrating because, you know, if, if this was a 3.75 inch blade or a 3.5 inch blade and they just scale the whole thing down, take the point off of this so that your hand can go all the way to the back of the blade and then chop the blade off like right here or the handle, uh, you know, shrink it down a bit. I, I could recommend that knife to like everyone, <laughs> but here I've got like the biggest asterisk ever of, are you in the market for a four inch blade? Then this is my go-to recommendation. Um, I still personally like the Suhoi better. You know, if, if somebody said I, I had to pick between the two and neither of them can I ever sell again, you know, I'm still, I'm still picking the Suhoi. I, I, I prefer... The blade is a little bit taller. I like the finish on it just a smidge more. I like the intricacies in the design. So <clears throat> I, but I don't think this is necessarily worth another 40% in cost. If you're just looking to get a really amazing knife for a good value, then I'm going to recommend the 037 most of the time. But if you want, you know, something really fancy and luxurious, then to spring for the Suhoi. So, um, you know, size. Size is, is the last thing. So let's go into the conclusion. Conclusion is I think this is fantastic. I think there's innovation. There's execution in the the actual production of the knife. The action is amazing. The ergonomics are amazing. The clip is good. Um, the finish on both the blade and the titanium is premium. The, uh, you know, 
cutting power of it, obviously, Ed 390 steel is, you know, top notch. This is a, a super, 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 super excellent value. Just everything you're getting is so top notch. Uh, the, you know, few nitpicks are pretty minor. It just goes down to size. Size, if you can make, and, and this makes a good argument for you to make an exception. If you're like, I never make, I never buy knives over 3.75. If you were going to break your own rule and get a bigger knife than that, I think this is the reason that would, you know, siren song you over to its side to try it out and see if you can make a, a big knife work. Because, you know, ultimately in the pocket, this felt just as good, if not better than the Suhai in the pocket. I mean, you look at you know how long it is it's much shorter here uh thickness is about the same uh the clip is small so it doesn't look like it's any bigger in your in your pocket i guess uh as far as what people can see and then weight wise it's only four ounces i mean there's a ton of knives that are four ounces uh or higher than that at that you know you would carry that are 3.75 or, or 3.5 so in terms of actual pocketability I don't think you're giving up that much. It's more just the legal stuff of being at four inches. Um, it helps you cut really wide stuff like Chipotle burritos if that's if that's your thing. So yes, I this is a knife I recommend. Just you got to be okay with the size and know what you're getting into. I hope this was helpful to you. I'll see you in my next video. Bye.